Hello and welcome back to Football Manager 2018 with Blackburn Rovers. We are in the second to last season of our save with Blackburn. As I've said before, you might remember, you might not remember, once my contract is up, I am leaving Blackburn. I've got two years left on this contract. I'm getting paid absolute peanuts. For an FA Cup winning manager, I'm getting paid just £5,250 a week, I think it is. I could probably go elsewhere and get about 80 grand, but I'm not going to. I'm going to stick with Blackburn. It is also the final season at Ewood Park. Next year, we'll be playing at the Roy something or other stadium. I, well, I can never remember the name of it. Let's go find out. The Ronnie Clayton Park. That is where we're going to be playing at next season. So the 26th, 26th, 29th of the 6th, 2031 will be our first game, probably. In the new Ronnie Clayton Park. So, yep, final season at Ewood Park. We've been here since 1882. That's a very long time. I feel like they should probably just rebuild Ewood Park. There's there's a lot of history there. So, first episode of a new season, and that means we have to go through transfers. And we're also going to have the Charity Shield game, because it's the first time we've ever been in the Charity Shield. And in theory, this is a trophy, and I do want to win it. We have made £37.5 million so far this transfer window. It is still open. We've still got a couple of weeks left of the transfer window being open, as far as I'm aware. We've we've sold a lot of people. We've bought in not a huge amount. We've spent a fair amount, but we haven't brought in a huge amount of players. Let's go through the outs. Firstly, Jonas Gutz, who is a player who's basically not done a single thing for us. Did he even play for us? He played six games for us. Uh, a very long time ago. He has finally left the club on a free transfer. He's gone to Angers SCO in France. He just wasn't very good, was he? Another player who wasn't very good is Moussa Kouakoubamba. He signed for RC Lens in France as well for 975k. 23 years old now, wasn't ever going to break into our first team. For 2.5 million, Real San Sebastian, or Real Sociedad as they're more commonly known, has signed Jordi, a player who we signed because our scouts reckoned he was amazing. He wasn't amazing. We probably could have got more than two and a half million pounds for him. I just wanted him off the books. Now we're getting into some bigger numbers. For seven and a half million pounds, Andil Maheo, the South African centre-back, has signed for Dortmund in Germany. I'm a little bit disappointed to see this guy go. I was hoping he'd be better than what he was. He probably will get better. He's probably got a lot of potential in the game. But for us, he just didn't really do the job. Spent a season out on loan at Stuttgart. Didn't do too badly as far as I can tell, so that's clearly earned him a move to Dortmund. I wish him well. Another player who's moved to Germany is Frank Stakic, the Canadian all-rounder, really. Central midfielder is where we used to use him for the 21 games that we did play. He's gone for 12 million? 12.25 million? 10.25 million pounds. He's gone to Freiburg. I don't think we were going to miss him, to be honest. We got a decent amount of money for him, so see you later, Frank. And the final player to leave currently on a big transfer fee is Klaus Jensen. He's gone to West Brom. Now, I just wanted to shift him on. He's he's not great. He's all right. He's gone to West Brom. I think we're getting about £15 million in total for him. It's a decent return for a player we had for a couple of years. We bought him for about £3.5 million. Decent profit on him. We do have a good selection of youth players to try and replace him, so I'm not too worried at the moment. In addition to the players that have gone out on permanent transfers, three players have gone out on loan with actual fees behind them, and a whole load of players have also gone out on loan for no money at all. Ivan Petrovic is one of the players gone out on loan with a fee. He's gone to Leicester. He's going to hopefully get first-team football for an entire year, playing, I'm assuming, still in the Premier League. I don't know. They might have got relegated. But Petrovic needs first-team football. Next up to go out on loan is Dejan Lakisavic, the Serbian central midfielder who I tried to retrain as a striker and it didn't really work. He's gone out on loan to championship side Hull. Now, I'm hoping his loan spell here is a lot better than his loan spell at Crystal Palace, which was ended after about three days when he broke his ankle. He's going to hopefully get first team football for an entire season down in the championship. He probably should be in the Premier League, but Hull wanted him. He wanted to go to Hull. I thought, why not? Get him some games. And the final player to go out on loan for some money is a little bit of a strange one. It is Daniel Allwang, the German defence midfielder, central midfielder, centre-back, not really quite sure where he plays. He's gone out on loan for the entire season to Inter Milan in Serie A. So he's going to play an entire season, hopefully he'll play an entire season, for one of the biggest clubs in Italy, potentially even Europe. 
I'd argue saying. They're, def- they're definitely up there. That's a bit of a strange one. He spent last season alone at Fulham. Had a decent year at Fulham. I don't think it was good enough to be playing for Inter, though. There are plenty of other loan deals that have taken place, but this one is a big one for me. Lee Butler has finally turned 17. He turned 17 a couple of weeks ago, or a couple of months ago in game. He has gone out on loan to Bristol City for the season. They are our feeder club. He's gone there. Hopefully he's going to play first team football. Hopefully he's going to come back as a world beater. I don't know what league they're in. I'm assuming championship. They are in the championship. So Lee Butler is hopefully going to get a year of football under his belt. Players that have joined us then. Now, starting with someone who you might think costs a hell of a lot of money considering he's currently valued at £49 million. Andres Gomez, Argentine striker, signed from PSG on a free transfer. He has not cost us a penny apart from his signing on fees. That is a ridiculous signing. He's another striker. You'll realise earlier, I didn't sell any strikers. I've still got all my strikers. I've signed another one. For 675k, I've raided Partizan once again. To be fair, I I signed this guy about two years ago. He's only just joined because he's only just turned 18. Boban, Rajkovic, Rajkovic, I'm assuming Rajkovic, he's signed. He's going to go out on loan as soon as possible because he's really good. He needs first team football. If he can get first team football and learn English at the same time, brilliant. Another prospect to join us is Goncalo, a Portuguese central midfielder who signed from Vitoria Guimarães, maybe. I don't know how that's ever pronounced. He signed uh, not a huge amount of money. I think it was like £1.6 million, £1.3 million pounds he signed for. Again, he's going to go out on loan, possibly to Colchester by the looks of it. Another young striker to join us is 19-year-old Croatian Daniel Knezovic. Sure, Knezovic, that's actually that's probably about right. He's signed for how much money? £4.7 million is how much he's cost, and he's immediately gone out on loan to Aberdeen. Hopefully he'll get an entire season playing in the Scottish Premier League. Maybe he'll come back better. I mean, so far, as a poacher... He's pretty good. Finishing 17, first touch of 17 as well. Natural fitness and pace is 18 and 16. Agility 17. He's got some really good stats. Maybe, maybe he, we, maybe we shouldn't have loaned, we should have definitely loaned him out. We've got like 15 strikers. Because this is another one. Francisco Foster, 22 year old American striker signed from LA Galaxy. 10 million pounds for this guy. I don't think I've spent 10 million pounds better than on Francisco Foster. Look at his stats. He's currently four and a half star ability, four and a half star potential. He's pretty much a complete forward. He's a little bit versatile as well. Can play just behind the striker, strikers or as one of the strikers up top. I've got a lot of strikers and no one really seems to be leaving. So this is the current look of my first team for this next season. I've got three first choice goalkeepers, or two first choice goalkeepers, Juan Pablo Velez and Gil also, Boban Rajkovic is there as well. I think I've... I still have... Yeah, I've still got German Cordoba. He's gone out on loan to Mainz for the season in Germany. So I've got lots of keepers. I've currently got five central defenders or five players training up for central defenders. Rafael Capone, Gomez Rigo, Glenn Bell, Urukalo, and Stevkovic. They were all there last season, as you as you well know. Markovic, Rodders, Alberto Torres, Anacic are going to be wingbacks on the left and or the right. Dennis Montoya is still here. Nenad Kampar being retrained as a Mazala, but he is transfer listed. Basuni is being retrained as a ball winning midfielder, which I feel like probably is a waste of time because he's uh, he's not. No, let's let's just train him back. Train him, train him back as a wing back. There you go. We've now got five wing backs. As I was saying with the midfielders, Montoya, Kampar, James Sani, who's been out on loan for the last couple of seasons, he's going to probably get quite a few games this season. He's going to replace the uh, the Klaus Jensen of the team. Nikola Popovic is training as a Mazala. Then moving forward, we've got Andrea Damianov and Adam Fenton, who are both going to be shadow strikers. Constant Diaby, he has one year left on his contract, as far as I'm aware. He can't get a work permit, so I'm desperately trying to retrain him, and he's going to get a lot of games this season. He needs to get a lot of games, because if he doesn't, he's not going to get a work permit. And then finally, you can see there, six first-team strikers. Thomas Valenta, Andres Gomez, Pascual Sole, Gustavo Mortuzo, Paul Erkdina, and Francisco Foster. I don't know how I'm going to pick a starting eleven because... I want to play Foster, I want to play Okdina, I want to play Artuzo, I want to play Sole, I want to play Gomez, I want to play Valenta. I don't think it's going to happen. I'm hoping, and I never thought I'd say this, but I'm hoping Bayern come in for Sole, uh, Sole, Artuzo, sorry, and Monaco, or Monaco, come in for Sole. Damianov's wanted as well by Atletico Madrid, Rafael Capone is wanted also. 
by Napoli. So yeah, there's still plenty of room for things to change. Speaking of change, we should probably go through the uh, other players who've gone out on loan. So as I mentioned, Lee Butler's gone out on loan to Bristol City. Lucas Bay, who's had a very good season last year, he's gone out on loan to Freiburg. Lucas Bay is a wonder kid. I don't know how he's a wonder kid, but he was at Darmstadt last season. He's gone to Freiburg this season. He's a wonder kid. Hassan has gone unknown to Frankfurt. Luke Morgan has gone to Huddersfield. Daniel Knezovic has gone to Aberdeen, as I mentioned earlier. Julian Ortiz to Espanyol. Cordoba to Mainz. Sif Haleli Mabambo has gone to Getafe. Yuri Meslik to Luton. Jordan Fuller, the English, the young English lad, has gone unknown to Germany. He's gone to Werder Bremen. Paul Harvey to Bradford City. Two players to Aston Villa. That's Ray Short and Anton Gruber. Grimsby have picked up George Baskin and Mick Cook. I have no idea who those two players are. And Sasa Poppin has gone to Crew. That is so far all of our transfer business. We do have £76 million in the uh, bank to spend. We've got about 100k worth of wage budget. Actually, we've got more, 150k. Uh, but we've blown our financial fair play because, you know, we do that. Let's forget about transfers and let's focus on the English Community Shield game up against Chelsea at Wembley Stadium. It's going to be a kick clash because we're both wearing blue. We've beaten Chelsea once. We've lost nine times and drawn once. I really don't think we're going to get anything from this game. The starting lineup that I'm going to go for, Juan Pablo Velez returns to the number one slot in goal, although he does wear the number 13 jersey. Doesn't matter. He's, he is the number one keeper. He just balls it up against Chelsea last time. This is time for redemption, Juan Pablo. Stevkovic, Urikalo and Gomez Rigo are the back three. Branko Markovic will be the right-sided fullback. Alberto Torres will be the left-sided fullback. James Sani will make his debut. I think it's going to be his debut. Alongside Dennis Montoy in the middle. Adam Fenton will be just behind the strike partnership of Paul Ogdina and Francisco Foster. I'm really concerned about my problem with really good strikers. Because Ortuzo, Gomez and Sole are all on the bench. That means that we still have Thomas Valenta just sat there. He can't even get on the bench. Nenad Kampar's another one, really. That's why I'm retraining him, because I've got far too many complete forwards. I need to remember that this is basically a glorified friendly. That's all it is. It's a glorified friendly. If we win, we get a little bit of trophy afterwards. If we don't win, it doesn't matter. We should just be happy to be taking part in it, I guess. 17 minutes on the clock and we've got our first highlight. Sani controls the ball from the headed clearance. Montoya, long ball upfield towards Francisco Foster, the young American. Cuts inside, plays it back to Fenton. Oak Dino, who had a great season out alone. Foster's there and Francisco Foster has put it in the back of the net at Wembley Stadium. The American, on his debut, makes it 1-0 in the Charity Shield final. Uh, Charity Shield final. It's just in the Charity Shield. There's no knockout rounds to get to it. We're 1-0 up. We're beating Chelsea. Throw on for Chelsea. Bogers or Boggers? Boggers? Sure. Boateng gets the ball. Boateng spins, turns inside. Veli Kiv Kivrak crosses in. Frimpong's there. He's hit the bar. Stevkovic can just about clear it. And now Fenton runs onto Torres's header. Oakdina controls it on the left hand side. The ginger wizard gets round his man. Inside to Montoya. Montoya's got three in the box, four in the box. Gets tackled. It's going to be a throw on. But that was a good little break from us. Torres with a throw. 31 minutes on the clock. It was not a good throw. But he's a central midfielder. So probably shouldn't be taking them. Larea running forward. He's injured himself. Jesus Larea's. Gone down, Bogus runs into the area, crosses in, Boateng at the back, hits a lovely effort, and it is gone for a corner? It has gone for a corner. Boateng takes the corner towards the centre. Gomez Rigo heads clear. Foster's going to hopefully get there. No, he doesn't, but it doesn't matter. Half time then, and I'd say we are not the best team here. We are 1 0 to the good, but I think it was just that one little counter attack that kind of did it for us. I'm going to stick with the same, am I? Am I going to stick with the same? Torres is going to come off for Slavko Anacic. That'll do. We'll just do the one sub. Both my fullbacks, I've noticed, playing really badly. So I'm thinking they probably need to be coming off both of them. Just before the hour mark and we have a goal kick. Stevkovic forward to Markovic. Fenton. Gets tackled, and now it looks like Chelsea are going to break. Billinger, edge of the area. He's got Frimpong to his left. Has a go just over the bar. Now, they subbed off Larea. Obviously, he picked up an injury. They brought on that Billinger guy. Billinger is just as good as Larea. Adam Fenton's picked up a little bit of an injury. I don't know whether I want to bring him off or not. Sander Berger, edge of the area. Has a go. Hits it just wide. I mean, it's a preseason friendly. Let's bring him off. There's no point in getting him injured any more than we have to. We're going to bring... On Gomez, and we're going to put Foster like that. 
Oh, let's do it. I know, I know we're kind of going back to the old school. The old school uh, never wears Prada. We're going to play three up front. Let's just see if we if we can actually do something with three strikers. Final ten minutes of the game. I want to do another sub. Nothing's actually happened since I've done the change. We're going to bring off Paul Ogdina or Tuzo's going to come on as well. That is the final substitution. Hopefully, it just stays 1-0 and we pick up a little bit of silverware. A minute and a half of normal time to play and Reese Nelson tries to get the ball into the area. Markovic gets it though. Gomez. Gomez forward to Ortuzo. Chests it down. He's got a player to his left. He goes for goal. James makes the save. We're going to get a corner. Three minutes of injury time added. Boban Stevkovic to take the corner. Plays it out wide. Montoya controls the ball. Foster flicks the head on. Ortuzo's there. Ortuzo was offside. Highlight following the offside call. So we do have a little bit more going on. Veli Kurvac. That's definitely not it. Sander Berger. Forward. Reese Nelson is going to get there. Two in the box. Crosses in. Billinger's there. Flapped out by Velez. It's still not cleared. Nelson's going to get it back. Berger has a go from outside the area. Hits it wide of the post. Hopefully that's it. Calm it down now. Just play to the just play to the 93rd minute. We've got the ball though. Foster. Cuts inside. Finds Dennis Montoya. Montoya towards... Oh, I tried to play Gomez through but didn't manage it. Billinger now. Finds Frimpong, little through ball to Veli Kervarak, has a go, hits the post, and Gomez Rigo can clear. And another highlight, we've got a minute left to play. Anacic, Foster. Foster's got two in front, he's got three in front if you include the right-sided fullback who was making a run forward. Bogus gets the ball for Chelsea, Frimpong. Frimpong tries to cut it inside, finds Sander Berger, Frimpong's in the area, but Anacic cuts it out. Billinger's going to score. Billinger scored, but he was offside. I don't know how he was offside because Anacic was the one who kicked the ball towards him. Oh, there's 20 seconds left. I said earlier, it's just a friendly. Yeah, but I want to win it, don't I? I want to get as many trophies as possible. So, it's looking like the first trophy is in the bag for the season. It's going to be the Charity Shield. I mean, it doesn't mean a huge amount, but, you know, we beat Chelsea. Second time we've ever done it. Oh, look at that. Look at that. We even get a little celebration. Look at us winning the Charity Shield. Even though there's no shield there, we're actually holding a cup. We'll ignore that. The final score then at Wembley Stadium is 1-0. Francisco Foster, the American, picking up the goal and the Man of the Match award. We weren't very good. Chelsea were much better. They just couldn't score. Velez got a 7.7. I think he's definitely uh, redeemed himself following the last time we played Chelsea. So the transfer window closes on the 15th of August in this game. So we've got, what, five days until that time. I'm going to stick with it until the transfer deadline day because basically once the deadline's done we're into the season no more transfers should take place it looks like we've got a bite on Pasquale Sole I tried to negotiate with AS Monaco they've gone to 83 million pounds 47 and a half up front 18.5 over six months six six monthly installments four I don't know how how long it's going to take to get that and then also 16 and a half million pounds after he plays 50 games for Monaco, which I think he will do with ease. I think we're going to accept it, purely because I don't need him. I mean, I never thought I'd do this, but I don't need him, so he's just going to go. A couple of days have passed, and Joshua Sinclair, the youngster, has gone out on loan to Gateshead for the season. I feel like we'll never see him ever again. And Ian Byrne has signed for Maidstone, another player we'll probably never see again. And another one out on loan. This time, Rod Wedderburn has gone on loan to Stockport for the year. And Pasquale Sole is going to be leaving. We're going to get £66 million up front. Watford are going to get 1.5% of the deal. We're going to get £44 million back into the coffers, which isn't a huge amount of money, but I feel like we don't need to spend it. There he goes then. Pasquale Sole has left the club. He was only there for two years. We spent £17.75 million on him from recently relegated Watford. He got a decent amount of goals for us, didn't he? 29 in the most recent season, average rating of a 7.6, 12 assists. Probably could have got another year out of him easily. I say probably, definitely could have done. But I like to buy footballers in Football Manager, and he's just kind of on the revolving door of strikers. He was the next one to leave. It's transfer deadline day and Goncalo has gone out on loan to Colchester. I think I mentioned it earlier that Colchester were after him. He's gone out on loan for the season. Hopefully going to get an entire season of football at Colchester. That's going to be quite good for him. 
and we've made a transfer as well. 25-year-old Swedish left-back Joachim Tobiasen has signed. He was out of contract in December, I think, because the, the Swedish season runs from January to December. He was out of contract in December. I've paid out, paid out his contract for £500,000, and we've now got a £21.5 million left wing-back. He is amazing. So I might need to do some old... Uh, changes around in terms of who's doing training things like that but maybe we've got our new first choice left back there and we are splashing the cash once again this time Luis Gustavo Brazilian central defender has joined from Porto 35 million pounds it's a lot of money I know but he is a natural ball playing defender I think he's probably better than Stevkovic as well he's joined probably will be one of our first choice center backs for the majority of the season and Francisco Foster has torn his pectoral muscle, injuring himself lifting weights. Brilliant. And that is it. The transfer window has closed. There's been some big, big transfers that have gone on, mainly to France by the looks of it. Paul Williams, world-class winger, has gone to PSG for £87 million. Stakic, Ryan Stakic, not Frank Stakic, he's gone from Everton to Manchester City for £84 million. And Federico Del Vecchio has gone to AS Monaco for £70 million. They spent a huge amount of money. Well, there you have it then. That is going to do it for this episode with Blackburn Rovers. We are days away, a couple of days away from our opening game of the season against Manchester City. Then Arsenal, then Man United. Wow, we do not start slow in this season. For the next episode, I think what we'll probably do, we'll probably do Arsenal-Manchester United. I'm going to play the Man City game myself. Arsenal-Man United is also not going to be an easy game at all, is it? Hopefully, by the time we finish the first three games of the season, we're sat top of the table because we won all three of them. I get the impression that we're not going to be doing that. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Football Manager 2018 with Blackburn Rovers. If you did enjoy, if you wouldn't mind leaving a like, if you want to see more, hit the subscribe button. Tell me in the comments what players you think were the best signings that I made. Was it a good decision to sell Pascal Sole? I'm assuming it probably wasn't a good decision. My money is on Francisco Foster. He's going to be uh, our signing of the season. Unless he continually gets injured. Paul Dean is going to be playing regular football this year as well. So I think we're in for an interesting year. <laughs>